Mike, are you a sex addict? Yes. And how, how, what determines the title sex addict? Or are you just an everyday man? <laughs> right, you know? right. Um, that was, uh, when, when I got discovered, Jana didn't even know, none of us knew what really sex addiction was. But all she knew was like, you need to figure out whatever this is, because that's not normal behavior. And so when I saw inpatient treatment, um, then I learned more about the addictive mindset, the addictive process, and how it relates, whether it's alcohol or drugs or sex, it's all the same thing, it's all the same characteristics and, and 12 steps. And yeah. I realized that my habits were addictive. Yeah. And, and it was all, it's all based from emotion for me. It's not physical things where I see somebody, it's all emotional for me. Right, because addiction is a symptom of a much deeper problem. And what, what is that much deeper problem? Do you, do you know? Do you... For me, a lot of it comes from never feeling like I was good enough. And never feeling like whatever I achieved in my life, whether a relationship, whether my professional career, did I really earn this? Am I doing everything that I can? Why do I have such a beautiful wife? Why do I have this family? Like, I don't deserve this. I'm not good enough to have this. Mm, mm. And, and it's one of those things where trying to convince yourself that you are, yeah. well, I was never really able to. Yeah. And I think, too, with him, like, it was hard for him to connect intimacy with sex because a lot of people just think, like, I'm like, well, why can't you be intimate with me? Like, I'm your wife. And for him, like, that wasn't, that wasn't showing love. And yeah. sex and intimacy just never connected. So I think he's yeah. being able to work on that and trying to understand where that deep-rooted came from. And with addiction, too, everyone is so frustrating because everyone says it's just an excuse, but it's like, if, if that was his fix, just like you, someone needs their coffee or their cigarette, and that becomes an, an active addiction, so. Yeah, me at Neiman Marcus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so t take us back to the moment you found out. Oh, it was so hard. I was actually about to play a show um, in Orlando, and my girlfriend, um, Sarah, she actually, she was the one that came to me and said, your husband's cheating on you. And I was just like, there's no way, like, there's, it, that'd be impossible. I don't, I'm with him a lot. Like how? How? I, and there, I just was like, no. I shut it down. And she was just like, you need to do some research. And I was like, I don't even know where to start. Like, how do I go about it? And she said, the phone bills. So when I was in Orlando about to play a show, I started to look through phone bills, and I just saw a lot of numbers that just did not add up. Started researching, and was just, I mean, my jaw just dropped to the floor. And I FaceTimed him and said, you know, you have about five minutes to get your story straight. And then, you know, he unloaded. More than you even knew. M more than I even like knew, but then also, um, you know, once he went to treatment, more came up and we discovered more. But it was, and then I went and played a show, so that was a tough show to play. Wow. Yeah. That's that's a lot. You know, in hindsight, when you look back, were there lots of clues? Oh, looking back now, hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the, just yes. Now I would know hundred percent if he was again. Just the the defensiveness, just the, who he was as a person. He was just a shell of a person. Yeah. Have you changed your idea of what marriage is no. because of this? I don't want, I want just us. I don't want some, I, yes, I want him to be happy, but I want us to be able to work our relationship and to be the best we can together. And I know for me, I personally can't handle the feeling of not feeling good enough if he goes outside of the marriage. Mm -hmm. But here's an interesting tidbit when you were talking before we came out about deal breakers. And he told me that his marriage deal breaker is if I cheated on him. And I was like, that feels so one-sided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, it, and it truly made me really angry. So I was like, so you got to do all that. I but got then if, to. But then, yeah. well, you did. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, yeah. but I'm like, but then if I have that weak moment where I, do, which I, heaven forbid, I don't ever do that, but then you would leave me after all of that. I've right. stood by you, I've, you know. Wow. Yeah. Explain that, Mike. Wow. Explain yourself. I would love to explain myself. <laughs> explain that. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, good job, honey. Explain yourself, darling. So, my thing is, because of all the work that we've done, because of all the therapy, because of all the late night discussions, crying and working this out, the fact that either of us would get to that point would be discouraging because our whole process of therapy and everything is, well, we need to be talking about the feelings that would lead us to that point. Yeah. So there should be a lot of conversations before we ever get there. And just like I tell her, I was like, nobody knows what they'll do until they're in that situation. Yeah. That's just off the top of my head. If I had to pick one thing, uh. that, that's, that's probably the one thing that I could consider leaving, but again, I don't know when I get there. Right. I don't know what the circumstances but were, I don't this, know. But you know, I mean, the that truth is, me. as human animals, as human animals, we do have desires, we have uh, temptations. Uh, whether we act on them or not, that's a whole different story, but the concept of monogamy is flawed.